This conference will now be recorded. Uh, can you tell us where that link is again? Sure. If you scroll if on the, the chat, you'll see at the top of your window there is a um, there's a little cartoon uh, quote bubble. And yes. if you click on that, if you click on that, that will open the chat. Yeah, and, and just put our names in, just register there with our names in our organization. Well, ideally there's a there's a link at the very top that says please sign in. Um, and you can click that link, or we'll go ahead and we'll we'll download the we'll download the chat as well. So if you typed it in the chat, that'll that that might be good. Uh, but it's better if you go to the top, and we'll make sure we have your email address, since we might have some folks who didn't register um, or haven't had a grant before. So at the very at the very top. Yeah, the very the top on the very top on my computer is is Jean's. Uh, first type in from Rona Arts Commission. Oh, really? So yeah, I don't see the link. Okay. Well, just, yeah, I don't. Um, I don't see it either. It's. I don't see it either. Yeah, I wonder why that didn't show up again. I copied it again oh, and just pasted it. There it is. It's the at bottom. the bottom. Yeah. So we've we've got that link, and then I'm also going to paste the link again since it didn't show up for some reason. Um, for all the documents, everything you need to apply for the program is on the city's website, and there's a direct link to it. You can find it, of course, by going to arts and culture in the in the city, um, or you can click directly on that link, and it'll take you right there. And you're being uh, some, the 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 gods are smiling on you because my screen, my for some reason, my camera looks like it just stopped working, so you don't have to really look at me. I'm going to start this off by turning it over to uh, Jeannie Fishwick, the chair of the funding committee. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in this morning. Uh, when we met last March virtually to talk with many of you about your programs, I never thought we'd be still meeting virtually in December. So thank you for hanging in there and for coming this morning and for all the good work you've been doing. Um, for the past eight months. Uh, I am Jeannie Fishwick. Um, I'm chair of the committee. This is my ninth year on the Roanoke Arts Commission and my sixth year on this committee and my third year as chairman. And all that is to say, it's my last year. I've done all that I can do on this commission. Um, so I'm sorry not to be there with you in person, but thank you for, um, having us as part of your lives for the last nine years. The rest of the committee, who are all veterans to the committee, you probably know them, and you're going to be hearing from all of them today. Jeremy Butterfield, Jeremy uh, Carey Gates, William Penn, and Betsy Whitney. And William has graciously agreed to step up as chairman, so he'll be taking over this committee for the work of the 21-22 year. So you'll look forward to hearing from him a lot. I think um, one thing we've all learned this past year is that the artists and the organizations in Roanoke are among the hardest working, most innovative, most creative people anywhere in the world. The way you all have embraced the challenges of 2020 is truly inspiring. And we so appreciate your cautiousness with your funding and your creativity to find new ways to reach out in your art form. It's really been so great to see. And we really appreciate how responsible and careful and thought you've been with the trust that Roanoke City puts in to your organization when they offer you a grant. So we're going to spend today kind of reviewing the grant program and what all is involved and give you a chance to ask questions. Uh, probably your best source of information is the United Way if you're having technical difficulties. 
And then the other faces that you see on the screen, lots of people are veterans, they've applied multiple years, they have really great insight about how the grant process works and what we expect. And so they're a really good resource for each other. I am going to say, and probably everyone is going to say today, that the deadline for application is June 28th at noon. Thursday, June 28th at noon. January. January. Oh, well, yeah, it's January. six months. That's good. January 28th at noon. Um, that, does, that date is not flexible. If we get your perfect application that we want to give all of our money to um, at 1210 on January 28th, uh, we can't read it. Um, also remember that when you put things in the system, when you're finished with it, you've edited everything you want to do, you have to hit submit. It won't just sit in the system and automatically come to us. So January 28th at noon, hit submit. Um, some other dates we want you to be aware of are that Thursday, March the 18th, we'll be doing our applicant meetings. At this point, we assume they will be virtual. Um, but that's the date when you have a chance to talk to us, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. It's not a required interview, but we highly recommend it. It gives us a chance to ask you questions and um, let you hear from us. It's really a great exchange. So we hope that you will mark your calendar for Thursday, March 18th and be part of that. Um, the committee, the people I just mentioned, with Doug's great leadership, Doug is a non-voting member of the committee, but he guides us in every way you can imagine. We will meet on April the 8th and make our allocation decisions. Um, on April 20th, we will send those recommendations to the commission as a whole. And on June 7th, we will send those recommendations to city council. So sometime between April 20th and June 7th, you will be notified of our intention, what we would like to grant your organization. But just keep in mind that nothing is official until it goes to city council and city council makes the final vote, which is their first Monday meeting in June, June the 7th. Uh, the city has been very generous with the arts budget. Um, if you run into people on city council, and especially if you run into new members of city council, remind them how important the arts are to economic uh, stability in Roanoke. Uh, they've been very generous. They were very generous with the care package as well. Last year, we had $340,000 of city money to allocate. At this point, we expect it to be similar. Um, but as you all are all aware, on a national and a local level, the economy is changing constantly. So none of that is really a guarantee. But we're hoping to have in that 340 ballpark again. Um, so from we just want to we'll let you know of changes as we go along. Everything has to be flexible in this era. But the, the process of completing the grant online through the United Way site and submitting it to us has not changed. Um, that's what we've been doing for years, and we hope that that will not be a problem. We just want to remind you that these grants are very competitive. There are lots of wonderful arts organizations, and we add organizations every year um, that are interested in our funding. Um, so. Do your very best work with your grant, put the best foot forward. Remember that we are a program grant, so we're really looking to see what programming you're doing. Uh, we're gonna talk later about the criteria, um, but know that grants can be anywhere from a few thousand dollars to a $40,000 grant. So we fund large and small programs, and we want everybody to know that they have an opportunity to be funded. So just if, even if you're a small organization with a new idea, there's an opportunity for you to be funded. So we um, type in questions you might have into the chat or um, just interrupt if you have questions along the way, but we're gonna give you more details about the process now. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jeremy Butterfield on the committee as well. Thank you. Thanks, Jeannie. Hello, everybody. 
Um, I've got the uh, the easy part of all of this because I see a lot of familiar faces, uh, and so you you are well familiar uh, with what the uh, Roanoke Arts Commission is and and what we strive to do. So, um, but I'm just going to go over a quick review of kind of um, what it's all about here. So the Roanoke Arts Commission, uh, we're 15 member uh, citizen volunteer commission appointed by the council. And, and really our, our, our guide is we advise the council on investments and strategies surrounding uh, arts and humanities. So the primary investment tool is what we're talking about, um, the arts and cultural funding cycle, uh, which kicks off right now uh, as we speak. Um, but in addition to that, we also manage the uh, city's public art program. Um, we advocate for the arts as much as possible and, and oversee the arts and cultural planning. So. Oh, Doug's back. Hi, Doug. <laughs> uh, so our, our arts and cultural organizations really, uh, obviously, uh, we all agree, are critical partners um, to making Roanoke this uh, safe, um, caring, and, and economically vibrant community. Um, and, and our work is guided by the, the city's arts and cultural plan. We do um, this process, including the public arts process, the advocate advocating that we do, the overseeing, all speaks back to that um, to that strategic plan. Um, so the ACC Funding Advisory Committee, AFAC, is, as we like to call it, so we don't have to say all those words, um, uh, is who you're meeting with right now, who you're meeting with today, and who you'll hopefully be meeting with later on throughout the 2021. Um, and, and we just oversee that grant process and make recommendations um, through council, as Jeannie explained, on those dates. Um, so, uh, you know, myself, I've been on the, the AFAC, uh, I believe this is my third go around um, for AFAC, and uh, I was uh, previously on some other committees. This has been a really uh, great experience um, for me, just being able to see um, the, the big picture of arts in Roanoke. And really, I think that's what this is all about, um, is that big picture, big impact um, that all of these cultural, all of yourselves, all of your organizations, all of your programs can have working together. Um, and so that's why uh, we do strive to, to find collaborative efforts. Um, we do strive um, to, to find these um, interesting, unique programs that are um, uh, impacting audiences that maybe aren't normally um, accessed. Um, or don't have that opportunity all the time. Um, I think for me personally, I, I tend to look at um, collaboration, of course, um, but, I, but also accessibility. Um, I, I think that's really important as I go through applications. And I think, um, so that's just an important aspect to think about um, how, 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 how is the community going to be able to um, enjoy your programming and benefit from that. Um, so, like I said, that's the the easy part. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Doug now uh, for more of the detail and and the, the rest of the committee for the hard parts. Great, thanks a lot, Jeremy. Um, I just want to say that it is a real joy to be in this position. Uh, part of it is getting that close understanding of all the organizations and what they're working on, and the other part of it is working closely with the Roanoke Arts Commission, uh, which really is a dedicated and you have heard, I'm going to fix something real quick. Yeah, and you have heard uh, from a couple of them. You're going to hear from a, from a, a few more who are directly related and active on the funding committee. Um, but and you're also going to hear later from from Becky Dudley as well with United Way, and she's a real big part of this team. Um, and I just my first thing to do is to reiterate or iterate that uh, noon on Thursday, January 28th is the deadline. So noon, January 28th, that's a Thursday. Okay. Now, uh, today we're gonna talk about some, we're gonna hear some examples of things that were funded last year. Uh, and each of the, you heard already from Jeremy and Jeannie, some of the things that they look for, and each individual reviewer has, has specific things they look for. It's all part of the criteria. Uh, after you look at examples, Carrie Gates, the chair of the Roanoke Arts Commission, will look at the criteria. 
um, we're going to um, tell you what we ask for. Uh, we ask a lot of information about your organization. We really want to know um, what the, you know, what what your status is um, and and how well you're you're running things. And it helps us brag on you as well. Uh, we've got some really professional organizations. After on the or the um, application is really in two parts. It is that agency part about your organization, and then uh, there is the part about your actual program. And we'll review the application in those two parts. Uh, Becky's going to put her face on the screen and talk to us a little bit about um, the, the role of United Way, and just so you have, you know, feel really comfortable calling her with those technical issues. Again, I'm the point of contact for the kind of, kind of content. If you have questions about the, the, the program you are developing, uh, we'll have a little time for questions, and then William Penn's going to wrap us up. And uh, so I want to talk about just a few grants. And uh, I know it's hard for us to pick a few uh, we, because we, we like to brag on every organization and each program that we're funding. Uh, but I, we're going to talk about a few today just to give a sense of what we funded last year and what we were looking for and what really spoke to us about it. Now, of course, last year was very different with uh, the coronavirus. We had to really be flexible. Um, and the organizations, as Jeannie said, they really rose to the occasion. We had committed funding for programs. And in many cases, that um, the organizations had to turn around and say, OK, we know what our goal was and what our objectives were with this funding initially. Now in a different climate, how are we going to reach that same goal uh, in a different way? Uh, so we we worked with very closely with organizations. Um, one of the organizations that we funded in our largest grant last year was to the Taubman Museum of Art for their a very anxious feeling uh, exhibit, which is on now. And if you haven't gone to see it, please go see it. Uh, this is Voices of Unrest in the American Experience, uh, and it's from the Beth Rudin DeWitty collection. And uh, they, part of what spoke to us about this when they um, kind of regrouped and came to us and said, here's our, here's our plan, we were super excited about the outreach component of this. Now, they worked with uh, Spanish language speakers, the Hispanic community, and created audio responses to the exhibit. Uh, and, it's, and it's just in Spanish. Uh, and it's a terrific way to broaden the reach of the museum, invite more of the community in. Uh, we see arts and culture as being a, um, something that touches everybody's life, um, whether they're producing art, or if they're uh, uh, creating in some way in their, in their life, or you know, however they are connected to it, we want to celebrate that. And we want our institutions to be places that are welcoming to everybody. Uh, so this was a terrific um, collaborative project. Uh, it was uh, had great outreach. And again, it's our largest grant. So our grants run from a few thousand dollars up to the maximum, which is $40,000. Um, but it's, ra it's rare that we give a grant that, that large. Now, on the other end of the spectrum is a new grantee, the Alma Ensemble. And the Alma Ensemble is the musician collective dedicated to championing women, music, education, and uh, creating connection through music. Now, uh, this is a collaborative project as well. It's a smaller grant. It's the first time the organization's applied to us. Uh, in order to be eligible for the grants, you have to have been providing services for three years. It doesn't mean that you have to have been a nonprofit for three years, but you could have been providing services under a physical agent. Additionally, an, an established organization can apply for an emerging group under their 501c3, even if they already have another grant. So that's one way that uh, emerging arts organizations or emerging programs can be funded. Uh, now, the Alma Ensemble is working with a uh, female composer to commission a work that's going to be uh, um, a premiered in Roanoke. And they're working with the Youth Symphony Orchestra and the Chamber Ensemble. Uh, and the idea is that you know, in the initial design of the of the program, of course, it was planned for the summer of 2021, and we'll see how how what has to change because of the coronavirus. Uh, but the idea was to have it premiered at, at Hollands uh, on on campus when they're working with the the students in the Summer Music Institute. So that's a that was a much smaller grant and a first time grantee. 
Now, uh, we wanted to mention Southwest Virginia Ballet, who was funded at a level of around, that, I think, $9,000. And uh, that went toward the Nutcracker uh, production. And the idea was how they, that they proposed was how do, you, how do we get more people, make, make it more accessible, to get more people into the, the Berglund Center to see the Nutcracker. And that's specifically what we were funding. Of course, in the new environment, now on December and 11th and December 13th, you can see the Nutcracker on Blue Ridge tele Public Television. And you see there in front of the Mill Mountain Star, they've gotten really creative in producing this. The performers are wearing masks, they're dancing, but they're dancing all over Roanoke and in front of or at, at Fishburn Mansion, uh, at the Hotel Roanoke, in front of the Star, uh, at Berglund Center, the traditional home of, of, of one of our Nutcrackers in the community. So we wanted to, to, to share that. And again, access is an important piece of that. Um, and when we say, if you, you know, in the grant, with one of the grants, if you say you're gonna increase access, that's something measurable. So uh, in your program, you, we wanna know how many, how many students are gonna see the production or how many, uh, whatever your goal is, uh, there's gotta be some measurable uh, objective attached to it. Now the, the Grandin Theater Film Lab, um, one thing I remember about the uh, application process last year was that we had added a question about diversity and inclusion, and it was clear that the Grandin Theater was excited to answer that question. Um, and so we're, and that, when we're asking about organization and agency information, we know that um, how you're defining yourself as an organization informs every program you produce. And one of the programs, and the program that the Grandin Theater uh, applied for was the, the film lab, in which they're working with young people in a very collaborative way in Grandin Village and over at Roanoke College with their camp and with the school district, with the curriculum that they've created and are, and are rolling out. Um, so that's, a, that's another, another grant, specifically working with young people. Um, and as a way that, you know, a, a theater can be, um, a, it's a film theater, but it's much more than that as well. It's a center for community. And that's one thing that spoke to the, uh, the committee um, as well as their commitment to being a center for, for all of our community. A much a, a smaller grant as well. This is, a, I think, a $5,000 grant um, that we funded Artemis Journal over a number of years. And the Artemis Journal is uh, it focuses on poetry and art. It's uh, artist of the Blue Ridge, but it also extends far beyond that. Um, there, we ask with every application that you tell us what you're advancing in the arts and cultural plan. And one of the aspects of that is a, like a strong regional economy uh, as well. So the identity of Roanoke as an arts, the, in the our region as an arts region is important so you can you can see that on the cover of this there is a Dorothy Gillespie piece uh, this year is the year of color light and motion in honor of the centennial of Dorothy Gillespie's birth uh, in Roanoke uh, and so and there was a map that was created of all the Dorothy Gillespie pieces around the community so you can see the the collaboration the tourism aspect the economic development aspect uh, as well as creating a journal um, that is, provides an opportunity for local writers and artists to, to submit. And then finally, Virginia Children's Theater, we wanted to show a, an example of a, a group working closely with the schools. Uh, they had applied for the residency program and they do residencies with a variety of ages, uh, elementary students uh, in science, in history, in literacy. And um, again, this is one that had to be rethought because residencies in the school um, certainly changed during COVID. So they are creating some really creative uh, products that uh, uh, game show format or recorded uh, products that, are, that will be able to be used in the class to do the same SOL based work, uh, but it is going to be uh, virtual. And uh, when I read it, when I read their, their kind of their, their pivot on this, um, I got pretty excited. It was something I actually, I was like, wow, if I'd had this in school, I might have become a, a historian or a, a scientist. Um, I must have had really creative 
art teacher or something that maybe want to go down this path. Okay, and with that, I'd like to turn it over and talk about the specific criteria, and I'm going to turn it over to the Arts Commission or the Roanoke Arts Commission Chair, Carrie Gates. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. So as uh, Doug mentioned, I'm going to go over the criteria. Um, so I'll review some of the key funding criteria, but know that all the criteria is available online via roanokeva.gov in the link in the chat today. Um, you heard Doug mention some of the aspects of our funding criteria as he described recent grants, but let me add to that list. Um, number one and first, we fund programs and not operational costs. So we base our review on the degree to which your specific program meets the goals of the arts and cultural plan. So only 20% of the grant can go to management costs which sometimes are called indirect costs. Think about percentages of rent, utilities, administrative staff, and extra. All righty, so the next, the next slide talks about the arts and cultural plan um, and how we work collectively to advance our community. So this current plan was developed in partnership with organizations, residents, stakeholders, and our local leaders. So over the course of the next six months, we're going to come out with a process to update our plan. Um, we hope during that time frame, you'll be um, your important part of what we do. So you'll be part of building that plan, which is the community's plan and not the city government's plan. <clears throat> Under this, we fund three building blocks, the healthy regional economy, livable community with engaged neighborhoods, and then lifelong learning connections with to educational institutions. Um, this plan is also available on the website as a PDF. It's linked in the Resource Center and on our website and blog if you want to further read more about that or you want to reference that. All right, so then to be eligible or to be fundable, you have to meet some community need. Someone else can't already be doing the same thing. So the program has to be well planned out. The committee, the APEC committee, will look at what you want to accomplish, it, how you want to accomplish it, and then how you will measure your progress and success. We use the United Way structure for impact in the application as well as the monitoring process. The organization has to be well managed and financially stable. Betsy will talk more about that later and how we gauge that particular process. But before we do that, I want to go a little bit deeper into the actual program plan. All right, so our goals and objectives. Your program has to be very clear. When we're reading over our application, we want to make sure that we just, we just go through it and we under exactly understand what you want to accomplish. Um, and if it's so broad and not very specific, that's when we have problems with our scoring. So we want our program to be very clear and specific so that we can read and understand that as we go. Um, and and just, for, just take on one primary goal. Um, we understand that your organizations do a lot of different things, but stick with that one goal and then how you want to measure your progress. And then under that, align your objectives, activities, indicators, and targets. And so we're just gonna go through just a small example here and go from there. So here's an example under your goals and objectives. Your goal may be to increase access to and knowledge of hip hop. Um, the objective of that goal is to increase access to hip hop performance for elementary age children. Um, and then you go into your activities evolving around those goals and objectives, which may be scheduled tours and an introductory performance for all elementary uh, students. Then it's very important that we, um, you are very clear on the indicators. We're talking about the number of children attending and understanding. And then um, another thing that we look very closely at is your targets. Um, you know, 500 students participating. That includes a lot of target audience, and then maybe 250 to able to answer five questions, which provides a little bit of an evaluation. 
So that's just a general overview and an example of that. And I'm going to kind of turn that back over to Doug to answer any questions or move further than what I did. So Doug, it's back to you. Great. Thanks a lot, Carrie. Carrie. And we're happy to work with you if you're developing these and it's, it's, and it's not quite clear. We're happy to sit down and, and spend some time with you as, as you think it through. Uh, I do want to mention again the application. Everything you need for this is on the the City of Roanoke's website. Uh, the the links in the in the chat, um, and on that on there's like one page on our website. And I think I put a picture of it. Yeah, where you you know we have the everything from the easy funding, easy impact, and quick start guide to how to like, basically how to get on the United Way system. Uh, we've got the funding criteria, the policies and procedures, the cultural plan. Uh, we've got a list, a link to all the organizations funded in, in 2021. And as Jeannie mentioned, uh, some of your best resources are on this call with you. And last year we were, you know, it was, it, it, this is why we like having the mandatory meeting because we like having everybody in the same room where they're saying, hey, I can help you with that. And, or, hey, I'm really interested. You know, it's, Every, I've learned lots of lessons. I've learned how to, you know, how, how to make this a little bit of an easier process. Or I really get the uh, goals, the activities, targets, et cetera, and I'm happy to help you think through that. So it's not just me uh, and the team here presenting today. It's all the folks in the room, uh, the, the people across the street or across town, uh, working in complementary ways to make Roanoke a really vibrant place. So just a reminder again, and make sure if you uh, sign in on that on that uh, in the chat box and we'll we'll put it there at the, again at the end sign in on that sign in sheet we'll make sure we have all your right information uh, when you get onto the united way system uh, down at the very bottom left there's a resource center some of those same documents that we talked about being on the website are there in the resource center as, as well um, when you when you log in you'll see you've got a, a page like that looks that looks a lot like this um, and you'll be able to it's, it's, I think it's a pretty, really pretty clean system. Um, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you, it gives you section by section. So you've got your first, the first part is about your agency or the organization. And then the second part is about the program. And within those sections, it's broken down section by section. And you can see on the far right that you can tell if you've completed it, if it's in progress, if you haven't started it. Uh, and so you can, as you complete it, that work is saved in there. But save frequently to make sure you're saving it. I learned that again last, I learned that lesson a lot, it seems. And I learned it again last night on the, on the program that we do our newsletter. In. And you should, hear, you should hear the words that come out of my mouth. Uh, for darn, that's, that's, the, that's probably the worst. Um, but don't do that to yourself. Save, save frequently um, and don't lose any work. Now, again, we need to have everything in that system with the submit button pressed by noon on Thursday, January 28th. And here's some general tips. Again, click save, print and save the entire application before submitting it. Make sure you print out your application. Um, it's a good, you know, we're seeing cyber attacks and things happening with hospitals and such. Um, make sure you're backing things up. Um, and one way to back up is to, to print and have it on file. Um, we, you won't always have access to this system. So once we get everything in, we close it down. We'll print out a copy here and we'll save it electronically. But um, you're gonna, if you get funded, you're gonna have to go back to that application and know exactly what you told us you were gonna do and what your objectives were, what your targets were, and be able to draw on that to um, start to report to us. So make sure you have that on file. Uh, read through the instructions, use that resource center, um, and use your resources in me and, um, and Becky. If you have an account in the United Way system and for some reason you decide that you're not going to apply, please tell us uh, and we'll, we'll close that account and I think it, it, it will save us some, some resources. All right, and again, there's an image of the, the resource center. So the, uh, oh, with that, I want to turn it over to Betsy Whitney, who's a member of the committee to talk about the information we're going to ask for from your organization. Thank you, Doug. Um, 
And I just want you to know that we all know and appreciate the public view of your programs and the wonderful and varied art that you bring to the Valley. But we also need a view of your back office. Not as exciting, but we still need to know. So from the very basic that you are a 501c3, that you are insured, that you follow financial best practices, and for grants of a certain size, you know, that you are audited and independently reviewed. And it, equally important, we need to know that your board is fully engaged, invested, and representative of our community. And for the most part, the directions that the United Way provides are quite explicit and very helpful. But two tips that we can share from past experience, um, the board giving levels, we just need aggregate numbers. We don't need individual names and amounts. And um, that for the board participation, the form auto calculates, so it makes it very simple. And so for now, um, those are just two tips that we know of. Becky may have more when she um, speaks later. And for the most part, all the answers are yes, no, quick, short answers. But one requires a bit more insight. We wanna know what you're doing to increase the diversity of your board, your staff, and your patrons. And we all know there's much work to be done throughout the city on increasing equity. We know it can happen overnight, but the work must begin. So we need to know what you're doing, even if it's in the planning stages. This is the second year we've asked this question, and I can just assure you that it will become increasingly important in the years to come. So if you haven't had this conversation, please start now. Talk about it on your board, talk about it on your programs. It needs to begin now. And that's my brief bit, so heading back to Doug. Thank you, thank you, Betsy. Yeah, I, on that last key question, that timing the timing right now you know it seems before there was it, it, there was an awkwardness there was a discomfort there was a defensiveness often surrounding these conversations and right now uh, is an opportunity to push to push through that um, we're learning how to talk about issues so that we can address them if we can't talk about them openly we can address them uh, and that way, the way I love the way Betsy just said that we're, we're not perfect, uh, and we're we're watching this in the Arts Commission. Uh, we're having different kinds of conversations. Uh, we're it's and we're going to keep learning and getting better. And we're not going to do it right. We're going to do this imperfectly. Um, that's just that's how we are as people. But if we don't try, we're not going to improve. So thank you for being part of um, our, our ongoing and continual community improvement. Now the program sections, pretty pretty simple. You tell us what you're going to do, uh, and then you say, "Here's how what we're going to do aligns with your priorities." Uh, to the, that's what you're telling us, the Roanoke Arts Commission. Uh, we will also ask you a lot about the collaboration. Uh, there's this is interesting as well. Um, you see, in the past, there's been, you know, people will say, oh, the arts organizations don't collaborate. You know, they're all, you know, we have too many arts organizations. They're all doing their own work, and which is so, so far from the truth. Um, it's pretty amazing when you look around the Star City Arts Festival, or you look at the uh, Roanoke Arts Pop, which happened last March. Uh, we are, and if you look at any one of your programs, um, you all, answer this question very well on the on the collaboration part uh, because it's not just that you're saying oh we're going to you know in name only connect with this organization or we're going to ho so just hold an event there you know that's not necessarily collaboration if you're paying rent and, or paying the fee and holding an event somewhere collaboration is real and meaningful and um, and we're going to the only way we can advance as a community is through collaborative with our collaborative muscle 
and so this art this this grant program is one way to you know keep continue to build and keep that muscle strong uh, so you've got the objectives form uh, that is a that is a key piece of this because you know we do quarterly reporting on the grants uh, so we're, we ask for you every quarter to say okay well here's where we stand toward our objectives uh, this grant program is really robust um, I think we should be proud of it in the city a lot of or the communities it's kind of ad hoc uh, organizations will go to the council and say, hey, can we get some funding? Um, there, it isn't as, as structured. Um, it, sometimes it, if it's not structured, there's not opportunity for new programs to come in. Uh, if, it's, if it's not structured, there's, um, you know, of course, a lack of clarity. Now, we, we want to offer clarity in the process. Again, as Jeannie mentioned, we, we never really know how much funding we're going to have until uh, council firms up a budget and you know this year it, it got pushed back a, a month because we, we we didn't know what what the climate was because of the coronavirus you know again next year this this coming spring it's going to be difficult i think to know what the climate is economically um, we the next few months are going to be a critical piece in that so when you think about the um, when you think about the council saying okay well here's you know setting a, a budget in march um, we're not even going to really have fully processed what's happened in January and February. So this year, as you're building your program budget, I highly recommend thinking about it in kind of scalability. So if, if you have your dream program that you're going to develop, what's plan B or plan C as well? Now, I'll give a little insight to the funding committee. That is how they do their funding process. They say, okay, well, we think we're going to have $340,000. So this is what our, our, our dream funding is. Uh, at the same time, let's have a plan B and a plan C where we, where we step that down. And uh, the individual, I watched this as well, the individual reviewers will look at your application as, you're, um, as you are as they're reading it and be looking for that opportunity as well, knowing that, that we can never fund fully every organization. So they're always looking at it and saying, okay, well, what's the, what's the meaningful chunk of this that I'm most attracted to, that's most aligned with our criteria, and is going to help us advance the community in our, in our goals. Um, but, okay, so let me talk about a couple of specific things. Um, so the program titles can change if you, you know, we know that you're, especially if you're, this, this is a project that you're going to start in, uh, or a program that you're going to start in July. Uh, we know that you're building your collaborations, you're, there's, there's some unknowns, you're going to build something that is strategic, but you're also going to be a little bit opportunistic. And there might be a reason to change a program name um, or, ha or have it change in some way uh, based in the work that happens after you apply in January. and and after and, and through that period till we release the, the funding. Um, so there could be changes. We just ask that you're communicating with us. Uh, the justification is critically important. Now, uh, Jeannie mentioned it's gotta, it's gotta be filling a gap um, that no one else is doing it. Uh, if, if there is a gap, we need to see some documentation uh, you know, around that. Why is this, why is it needed? Um, who, who, it's, it's good to reference, you know, if you're, if you're building a case for why a program's needed, it's good to reference the, um, the closest organization that's doing something that might be similar. Um, or if there are, if, if you, um, and then, then why is that not meeting the need that you're identifying? And then we, then, you know, having some numbers for it, whether that's demographics based in, in the neighborhood you're serving or if it's uh, broader information about the role of uh, the, the, this, this form of arts or humanities um, and how it's supporting the community. That information is important and the, and the, the committee looks for it. Uh, so then again, aligning with the arts and cultural plan that, you know, what, what are you doing with that, you know, in that plan? Now the plan is, uh, you know, it's from 2012. Uh, there, there are still an, important goals that were that we're continuing and we're advancing. Um, we've done about 80% of the plan, which we're really happy about. Um, that said, as we start to develop this new plan, uh, this is why it's so important. 
if you're a part of it, you're, if you're a part of it, you're going to tell us what um, what we want to do as a community, and then we're going to be able to fund you based on what we're going to do as a community. So your voice around the table and the voice of your constituents around the table, that planning process will be really important. And then uh, on the budget, the rates. The rates do auto calculate. So the rates auto calculate, um, and it'll become clear once you start to, to fiddle with it a little bit. But don't feel like you have to fill out the narrative uh, if it's really clear. Just say it's clear. That gives you an opportunity. Don't um, don't feel like you have to fill out something um, and make up something um, to 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 describe a category that is that says personnel okay we know what personnel you don't have to necessarily name all the people in the narrative that, um, for that and with that uh, i'm going to turn it over to uh, becky dudley uh, we mentioned that the experts are you all in the room oops i skipped one i skipped one thing sorry about that i got a little distracted the demog this is really important too demographics are very important to us um, we as we are preparing to look at um, art, our arts and cultural planning, we're looking at the cities around the country. Uh, and Seattle, for instance, can tell you that their arts and cultural funding in their city, 65% of it goes to uh, underrepresented groups uh, and low to moderate income neighborhoods. Um, they, can, they can give you these, this data and it's measurable. Um, so we are interested in, in the demographics, who you're serving, um, a lot of times, you know, if there's a partnership with the school, the school will have the data. Uh, if, as you, and, and the time to think about it is in this design process for your program. Think about how you're going to specifically measure it. If you're going to measure your audience and you say, okay, well, we're going to we have people, you know, how, we don't know. We're doing this virtually this year because of, you know, because of the pandemic. Uh, could a survey work? Could a survey with a prize work? Think about how you're going to get that information. We really want you to, to dig into that. Um, it's not enough to say, well, we put it out there and whoever comes, comes. Um, we want to see how you're, who you're serving. Um, and you've got, uh, you can, if your program is a six month program, tell us that so that we're, as we're looking at how many people you're serving as well. There's a, there's a spot for that. Okay, and now with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our friend Becky Dudley from the United Way. Wow, it's really nice to see your faces. Uh, this has been a rough year for all of us, um, but I have thought of you all often, especially when I've seen what kinds of innovative and um, really neat things that you've done to try to kind of bridge the all the the changes with the pandemic so um thank you thank you all for doing things uh to try to keep those of us out here quarantined from losing our minds <laughs> uh, the virtual activities have been great uh, so thank you just really really appreciate it um as Doug mentioned, the instructions for EC Impact are out on Roanoke City's website. However, um, I'm seeing some names here. I know that these are some folks that I don't have logins for because I haven't seen your names before. So if you try to log in and you can't log in, that's not a problem. Just give me a call or email me either way um, and I will get you set up. Doug mentioned save often. This is web-based software. Web-based software is a big lie. Um, so make sure you save. Save when you're adding information, save when you're in the middle of typing out your narrative because you cannot trust web-based software. Uh, you don't have any control. It's not a program that's on your computer. It is web-based. So, you know, it's, it's out there somewhere. So just make sure that you save. Um, if you have any trouble printing, let me know because I can send you a PDF of your application when you're done. Um, another thing that, that folks have trouble with is when they get to the end, they think they're done and they forget to press submit. If you need help with that, 
and you're you're not sure, oh my gosh, have I submitted it? Have I pressed the stupid button? Is everything good? Call me or email me, I'm here. This is the highlight of my year every year is working with all of you and I get to see what kinds of programs are happening and what's gonna go on for the next year and I'm really excited. So contact me often, I'm desperate for human contact. Um, all I have here is, is the dog and as you can see, he is not the least bit interested in anything that's going on. Um, so just let me know if there's anything at all that you need. One other thing, Doug mentioned that we do close the application system uh, at the end after you guys have all submitted everything. However, those of you who've been doing this for a while, you know if you shoot me an email, uh, maybe you're applying for another grant and you wanna copy paste some stuff, just let me know. I can make your login active, it's not a problem. And then you can just tell me when you want me to turn the login off. So. I do encourage everybody to print. However, I lose things <laughs> every day. <laughs> so if you lost your printed copy and you want to log in again, or if you're too lazy to um, retype and you want to copy paste from the pages on the web, that's fine. Just let me know. Um, I'm really, really happy to work with all of you. And I please don't hesitate. Just let me know if there's anything you need or anything I can do. You all are awesome. I love everything that's going on around the city. I hate that 2020 was such a bust for so many of you um, because you had really great things planned. But I look forward to see what's what's going to happen in 2021. Becky, this is Ian from the uh, Grand and Theater. To save a bunch of emails and phone calls uh, to you later, um because i know i end up doing it every year can you give us your phone number and your email now so we can all write it down and yes. uh and that way we all know how to reach you without having to flood doug uh with saying what's becky's email again i'm putting it in the chat box thank you you are so welcome Oh, look, wow, and there it is, right on the screen. <laughs> I hope I got it right. Some of them get numbers wrong. Yeah. So, uh, so while we've got Becky, any other questions for Becky, particular? When when will the uh, applications, I'm sorry if I missed this already, when I'm multitasking, when, did, when did the, will the application uh, software become uh, open for us? It's live. It went live at 9 a.m. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, we really, uh, we really appreciate the work of Becky and the United Way. It makes it um, so simple for us on on our side. You know, this is the same system that our human services grantees apply through. So there's consistency in the uh, across the city and their due dates that's the same and um and that feels really good uh and so now I, before i turn it over to william for closing us out i want to check in and see if we have any questions i will point to the chat and uh Laura jane asked how do other organizations track demographics do you explicitly ask guest patrons for racial ethnic income information and uh and gene from uh Virginia Children's Theater said, Laura, we use surveys and enrollment data and sometimes visual reconnaissance from staff members. We typically are tracking race, ethnicity, age group, special needs. Any other responses to that, how your organizations track the demographic? And it, well, and I'll I'll say I think I think uh, both the, the reconnaissance, the surveys, uh, people are are becoming more and more used to being being asked this. And um, you know, I was working with an organization last year, and they were really worried about asking income level. Uh, but when they explained why they were asking the question, uh, people seemed really willing to do it. If they and they said, you know, in that organization specifically said. We really want to make sure the people who don't have as much income have as much 
as much access to our programs as everybody else. Um, so we're asking this information, and then people were really willing to to answer it. Now, um, it, and you can so you can if that's in a survey form, that might be people might might um, answer that. You can also if you if there's a question that you think is real is going to make people not answer your whole survey, you know you can make it. Can, you, know, you can choose to make a question optional or required. So you can you can let some people opt out if you if you want to, but you might still get some you know a, a good sample size. Um, all right, and then let's see another question uh, from a who can a nonprofit submit an application for a program to the Roanoke Arts Commission funding if they are applying to the city human services funding for a different program? It's program specific. So so yes, if you're working on a um, on a specific arts program uh, that is not funded through that, we would ask that you let us that you let us know. Though maybe that's a question we should we should start to ask. So because we'd like to look at that other application as well and and confirm that. Um, and uh, again, if the if they're for the program, there should be a need, and it should be an arts an arts based an arts based project. And I know you do. I know you you, you do arts based projects over there in literacy, uh, at Blue Ridge Literacy. And uh, which time period should we use to report statistical and demographic information? 2019 is the most recent full year. 2020 obviously is odd and not a true reflection of the program. You know that's a really good question, John. Thank you. Um, when when um, you have a track record and a history. Uh, so you know what it typically you know what it typically is. I I'd feel free to share both both of them. Now um, you're you're all we're all the same boat and we're looking at the summer. We don't know for sure that the you know how widely accessible the vaccines will be, et cetera, if we're back at, at full capacity. So you might want to give us those the the demographics. Well, certainly you want to. Um, understand how it's changed your your demographics, um, and if you give it to us for both of them, uh, then you will. If you end up having your plan A or your plan B, we'll we'll know how you're how you're working. Um, again, if you give us both of them, it just shows how thoughtful you're being about your your audience and who you're serving, um, and that's what we're really looking for as, as well. Um, any other questions? Hi Doug, I have a uh, just I have a question that I, it confused me a little from last year, so I just want to clarify. Um, for when it comes to the management cost, I understand you know indirect costs uh, you know are involved in that. In terms of staffing, though, and particularly for small organizations like ours, where I'm doing both administrative and the programming aspect, although most of my time is spent on programming. So you all are flexible with that when it comes to management costs, as long as, you know, so if I say 70% of my time goes back to programming, I'm not going to get dinged because I'm the executive director. Can you clarify no, that? We just, we, yeah, we just, we want to see a program budget. We don't want to see your whole organizational budget. So if you've got your program budget and there is a percentage or a portion of your time, probably you measured it in hours um, and the cost, your the cost for the employee in those over those hours, that's what we want to see for that specific program. Because we again, um, we want to make the monitoring as easy as possible for this. So we don't want to have to come in and 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 go through go through your entire operation. We're looking for the one program that we're funding. So the staff time that you are attributing to that one program um, is a is a is a piece of that. Um, now your overhead, if your your administrative your administrative hours, the hours you're operating, you know, you've got to basically have it have that separated out so that so that you're not asking us to pay in your program for. Uh, oh, there you just you just moved across this. <laughs> I, I lost you. Now I know where to look. Um, it, so we we don't want to pay for the operational aspect through the program grant. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I just, you know, I, I think I undersold the percentage of my time in last year's application because I didn't want to go over that. Um, I didn't want to go over that percentage, but, you know, if it's, you know, for the 
amount of time, my time that's spent on programming, I just want to make sure that it's, you know, that that's legitimate. So that that's fine. Great. And again, if you have any question, uh, we're happy to sit down and look at your budget with you as you're as you're de developing it. So just give me a call. Okay. Any other questions? Well, well, terrific. We'll start to um, we're going to start to transition and wrap it up. And I'm going to reach over to Mr. William Penn, and I'm going to unmute him. We're in the same we're in the same kind of office space. I can I can see him right here in the flesh. All right, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself. I think I'm gonna try to. Are we ready? Yep. Good morning, and thank you all for being a part of this call and for the work that you do to make Roanoke a livable city that um, provides meaningful cultural experiences for all its citizens. And you all do a great job of doing that. I've been on this committee for the last six years, and um, it's exciting to watch the energy that you all put into your programs and the uh, commitment you have for it. Um, I remember one year, a lady turned in this beautiful, beautiful, program and all of us loved it dearly but she didn't qualify and we tried our best to make work and i'm saying that to let you know that we want to give you what you are due to help you get your program across so whatever you're doing make sure you explain it to us well because on the 13th the 18th of march if we get to meet in person i love to see that enthusiasm and clear up anything that i have to ask about your program and most of the time when you tell me, it works. So let's hope we can all meet March 18th and make me happy, okay? Um, I want to encourage you to be sure and start your program, um, your proposals early. In case you have questions, you can get them answered and you can go ahead and get, your, get it done. And I want to reiterate that Hit that submit button on January 28th by noon. Don't fail to do that, because if you don't, you've worked in vain. Um, I think it's about all. I, I want to say that everybody's done a great job of covering each section of this application, and I'm sure that you all will do a great job. Now that that's done, I have something else to tell you. Uh, I'm on the collections committee. And uh, we are um, getting ready to do a um, thing at the um, Elwood Park Arts Walk. And we got a call out for sculptures. And the proposal is due January 18th. And the name of the, it's on the screen, A New, a new Life Reimaging Roanoke. And we're encouraging everybody that does it to use, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So, repurposing stuff that they've already done. And um, it's just regional and, you know, city-wise. And we actually were encouraging local sculptures in Rono to apply for this. And we really want people of color to do this. And we can put this in the Art Walk on Elmwood Park, uh, all around the city. So if you know anyone that's interested, please have them fill out that application. And uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, William. It's been a it's been a lot of fun developing that that call for re. Fifty percent of the materials have to be re repurposed. We're looking at how Roanoke is a continually changing city, um, and a city that, that works for everyone from our history of being a train community to the research that's happening at, at Virginia Tech Carillion how we're considering our community and the, the, the um, how, and yeah, yeah, what it's gonna be like in the future. It's kind of an exciting call and we developed it with a, you know, by talking with artists and to January 18th, um, is the concepts are due. They don't have, the pieces don't have to be completed, just the concepts. So we think that there, are, we know that some of you are working with set designers and, uh, and with, with students and, 
art students in schools and you've got interesting relationships. And I think we're going to get some, some good local talent responding to this. Uh, then uh, with that, again, noon, Thursday, January 28th, we're looking forward to reading your submissions. And with that, uh, again, there's the contact information. We will uh, press stop on the recording in just a minute and we'll post this as well in case you need to go back to it or share it with anyone else in your organization. Uh, again, this was not a mandatory workshop, uh, so uh, if, if there's an organization that you think should be funded through, they're, that they're developing a program that is worthy of funding, feel free to pass on the opportunity to them and they can watch this recording as well. Thank you very much to the, to the funding committee. Uh, I really appreciate all the hard work that you put into this and thank you to all of you for the work that you're doing to make Roanoke a better place. Take care.